Welcome to Service Online today. We are glad that you're here. We have something special planned for you today as this is a service specifically for you, our online audience. My name is Patrick Hookery, the Associate Pastor here at the church. Well, we are currently in a series called Doing Life Together, and we're looking at the book of Ephesians in chapter four. And something that Doug shared on Sunday that really resonated with me, that keeps coming back to me, is a phrase that he said this. He said, unity in the world starts with unity with us. Unity in the world starts with unity with us. I, I, that, I love that, and, and I think that there's a lot of truth in that. Because I've been really thinking over these past weeks and months, really um, one of the issues that continues to come to me is the issue of race in America. And honestly, I probably have more questions and answers uh, regarding this topic. And I've been reading and listening to church leaders and pastors regarding this topic. And I have just, um, I have just been drawn to having conversations with other people. And so if that's something that's of interest to you, uh, you would like to have some good, honest, open, respectful conversations about race and the issues surrounding that, just feel free to reach out to me, uh, connect with me after service or email me. If there's a few of us, maybe we can gather together and talk about ways in which we can address address or talk about this topic in a way that is going to unify us together as a church and, and us be a light into the world. So really applying what Doug shared on Sunday. Another thing that Doug has mentioned in this series is about doing life together is about the church is more than just sitting in rows looking at one person in a worship service, though that is incredibly important. It is about being together in circles and, and connecting with one another through relationship. About a month ago, our staff was thinking about ways in which we could do that, and we came up, to, up with the idea of church picnic. So we have uh, planned that. That is actually today, and we have, we're going to have hamburgers and hot dogs, some chips, a really a simple lunch for you. If you're interested, we're going to do that down in the pavilion out here at 1130. So yeah, we hope that you would check that out. Um, take part in that lunch. We'll have Kona ice afterwards as well. If you want to purchase a dessert, if you want to bring some of your own lunch, bring a chair, um, bikes for the kids, whatever you want, come and join us after service at 1130 today. God has provided a beautiful sunny day. Uh, we hope to see you here. All right, we're going to continue on in service and worship, and Tanner's going to lead us in song, song as we reflect on God. Jesus, thank you so much for the opportunity we have this morning to come together from our homes or from wherever we are. Um, Lord, thank you for the chance we have to worship. I pray that you will just give us a, um, give us a chance uh, for an, an intimate encounter with you this morning. Lord, thank you for your love. In your name, amen. And sing, I'm caught up in your presence. Caught up in your presence. I just want to sit here at your feet I'm caught up in this holy moment I never want to leave Oh, I'm not here for blessings Jesus, you don't owe me anything more than anything that you can do. I just want you. Oh, I'm sorry when I've just gone through the motions. I'm sorry when I just sang another song take me back to where we started I open up my heart to you oh I'm sorry when I've come with my agenda I'm sorry God, that you're enough. Take me back to where we started. I opened up my heart to you. I'm 
caught up in your presence I just want to sit here at your feet caught up in this holy moment never want to not here for blessings Jesus you don't own me anything more than anything that you can do I just want you oh I just want Nothing else, nothing else, nothing else we do. I just want you, nothing else, nothing else, nothing else we do. I just want you. Before we sing our last song, let's hear, the, let's hear the word of the Lord out of Ephesians 4 today. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope that belongs to your call. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. We're going to sing the song do it again which is a song about faith and um you know from wherever we are where if we're at home um whatever wherever we're watching this from this is this is the god that we're putting our faith in and um as we sing this song that you know talks about going through hard times and wondering where god is but knowing that he will come through for us it's important that we know the god we're putting our faith in and and what is true of him so let's sing this together. Sing walking around these walls. Walking around these walls. I thought by now they'd fall. But you have never failed me. Chains to come, knowing the battles won. For you have never failed me yet. Promise still stands. Promise still stands. 
Great is your faithfulness, your faithfulness. I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence. You never fail me. I know the night won't last. I know the night won't last. Your word will come to pass. My heart will sing your praise again. Jesus, you're still here. Promise still stands. Promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness, your faithfulness. I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence. Never fail. Your promise still stands. Great is your faith. sing, I've seen you move, you move the mountains, and I believe I'll see you do it again. Jesus, you have never failed us. Lord, your call is for us to love. Lord, teach us to love like you do, Father, and to just to love out of the abundant, overflowing love that you have given us. Lord, thank you for the ways that you bless us, the ways that you show us that you love us, Lord, and help us to put our faith in you in a deeper and more, more real way. In your name. Well, good morning, and thank you for choosing to worship with us today. 
Um, I'm excited to be outside. I'm excited for our picnic this afternoon. Uh, it's just a fun morning to be together and, and be community. And as Patrick mentioned, uh, we are continuing in our series Life Together this morning where we're exploring what does it look like to live out our unity in Christ practically. And this morning, we're going to look at what's at the core of our faith. What are those, those ideas, those commonalities that bring us together and unite us in Jesus? What is the purpose for our oneness in Christ, our common confession? But before we get into that this morning, I want to ask you guys a question. And feel free, I want to see some comments online. I want to let me know, uh, I want you to answer the question for me. So have you ever been part of a group or a team or an organization, maybe it was a hobby, that seems to be able to unite people from across all different kinds of walks of life? where in this one common purpose, you're able to just, no matter where you come from, what you do for a living, find unity in that thing. Perhaps for some of you, you played on a sports team, or maybe some of you were in marching band. Um, maybe some of you are more on the nerdy side and were part of a chess club. Maybe you like being together with a bunch of old guys and collecting antique cars, or maybe comic books is your thing. You know, for me, um, I have several, but the one that comes to mind the most this morning is, is drumming, percussion. I, most of my life, I've been a percussionist, and in particular, I love to play jazz. I love to get together with other musicians and to do um, improvisation, to play together, and you're not really sure where you're going to go. And what's really cool about jazz is that there's, it's almost magical, this ability to sit down and it doesn't matter what language you speak or how much schooling you have or where you came from. In that moment, you're all locked in and you're listening to one another and you're trying to anticipate what the other person's going to play. And you're thinking in your mind, how am I going to compliment this? How am I going to come alongside and add to this conversation? And in a lot of ways, the church is like that, right? It, it's a place that we're able to, to set aside our differences to, to come from all walks of life, all ages, all different communities around one common passion in Jesus. But I want to I want to maybe help us to look at this morning that there's something even deeper and more profound than that that brings us together. You see, fundamentally, Christianity's claim is different. It's not just that we're Jesus fans. It's that we believe that in the death and the resurrection of Jesus, God is somehow creating a new humanity under the kingship of Jesus. There's something amazing and, and world-shifting, reshaping, universe-transforming happening, and that's what we're united in. So before we get into this idea a little bit more this morning, I want to help us summarize the first three chapters of Paul's letter to the Ephesians, and then we're going to look specifically at Ephesians chapter 4 and what is the purpose of our unity. So here's, here's where we've been so far in the first three chapters. Paul's writing us a letter, or writing the Ephesians a letter from prison, and he's writing to those new believers that have placed their faith in the crucified and risen Messiah. And he says to them, Once we were separate from God and dead in our sins, we were scattered and broken and hopeless. But because of God's great love for us, he has rescued us from our sins through the death of Jesus, and because of the resurrection of Jesus, God has given us new resurrection life by grace through faith. And now he has sealed us with his own Holy Spirit. And by this one spirit, we now have access to approach the throne room of God as his children. And then Paul goes on to say that we are chosen and called out to be part of God's new family, a new humanity in Christ, we are now united together as one body with Christ as our head. No longer will we be separated or divided because of our language, our culture, our ethnicity, our social status, our politics, or even our religion. And all of this is leading to the moment where one day all things in heaven and all things on earth will be brought into unity under the reign of King Jesus. God is bringing about new creation under the rule of King Jesus, and we are somehow part of it. So here's the point of Ephesians for us this morning. The death and resurrection and ascension of Jesus is now creating one new redeemed family out of a scattered and fragmented humanity. So we get to chapter 4. And before we go on into this, I would encourage you, if you're watching online and you've got time, pause. Hit the pause button right now 
and pull out your Bibles and just reread at least Ephesians chapter 1. It'll help us to kind of understand where Paul's going here in chapter 4. Here's our passage this morning in Ephesians chapter 4, beginning with verse 3. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you were called, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, and one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. Man, that is a dense couple of verses. All right, so let's just, let's break this apart together real quick so that we can understand and see what Paul's getting at. What is it that unites us together? Paul begins with one body. And all throughout these couple of verses, he's going to be referring us back to the opening chapters of Ephesians. In Ephesians 1.22, Paul says, And God placed all things under Jesus' feet and appointed him to be head over everything for the church, which is his body, the fulfillment of him who fills everything in every way. It's amazing. We're not just united together. We're united together in Christ as he rules and reigns over all creation. And Paul goes on, one spirit. Or as he puts it in chapter 1, in verse 13, When you believed, you were marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit, who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession. Jesus didn't just leave us and go off into heaven. He left us. He sent us the Holy Spirit to live inside of us, to mark us as a promise that says we are God's possession. We are his children. And as Paul goes on in chapter 2, verse 18, he says, For through him we both have access to the Father by one Spirit. It is the very Holy Spirit living inside of us that lets us enter into the throne room of God himself and approach him as his children. Think about all the churches and all the believers, even just here in Lee Summit, that are identified with the death and resurrection of Jesus, that are indwelt by the Holy Spirit. We are all one. God does not have multiple families. He does not have multiple peoples. He has one, and we are part of it in the Spirit. And Paul goes on, Just as you were called to one hope when you were called. One hope to when you were called. What, what, what calling is Paul talking about here? Well, again, he sets it up and explains this for, for, to us in chapter 1. In verse 18, Paul tells us what that calling is that we've been called to. He says, I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people. So God has called us to be a part of his holy people. That's our calling. And what I I, I find beautiful here, that root word in Greek for calling is kaleo. It's the same root word as maybe another familiar word to us, ekklesia. Ekklesia means the called out ones, and it's the word we translate in our English Bibles as the church. So in other words, we are the called, we are called out to become the called out ones, God's holy people. Paul goes on in verse 5, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. What unites us together? We have faith in one Lord, Jesus Christ, and his death and resurrection, and we are united together in one baptism. What is it about baptism? It seems kind of odd for us today. What is it? It's not some sort of um, special magical ceremony. Baptism is that moment where as individuals, we publicly confess that we identify with the death and resurrection of Jesus and we're proclaiming to the whole world, we are now part of his body under his authority. And we're all united in that public declaration as we draw together as one. And finally we get to verse 6. And verse 6 is, is kind of the, the highlight mountaintop of these, these two beautiful verses here. Paul says, there's one God, one Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. In other words, the love and authority of God is permeating every crack and crevice of God's good creation. But there's something more profound and more amazing going on here in Paul's writing. You see, Paul was was a Jew, 
And a lot of these early believers were Jewish Christians. And all of them would have understood with bright, glowing, you know, blaring trumpets what Paul's doing here when he references this one God. You see, in Judaism, there's, there's one core statement of faith, one core prayer and practice um, that really is at the core of what it means to be, to be Jewish. And it unites them together. And, and that core understanding, that core prayer, that core principle is found in Deuteronomy 6.4. And it's often referred to as the great Shema. Um, it goes something like this. Shema Israel, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. And it means something like this. Hear and obey, you children that wrestle with God. The Lord is your God. The Lord is one, singular, united, unique, separate, and holy. Paul is identifying our unity with the unity of God himself. And what's amazing to me is that Paul's not the only one who's done this in our New Testaments. Jesus himself, in places like John 10.30, makes these bold, astonishing claims when he says things like, I and the Father are one. And that may sound strange for us today, but to be clear, his first listeners, the Jewish leaders around him, do you know how they responded to this claim that Jesus made, that I and the Father are one? They wanted to stone him to death for claiming to be God. They knew exactly what Jesus was saying. He's saying, just as God is one, I and the Father are one. He's identifying himself with God himself. And Jesus does this again, multiple places. I think in particular of John 17, where at the end of Jesus' earthly ministry, he's about to suffer crucifixion, and he's praying for his believers, his disciples. And this is what Jesus says. He says, my prayer is not for them alone, meaning just for his disciples alone, but I also pray for those who will believe in me through their message. That's us. Did you know that Jesus prays for us in the New Testament? This is his prayer for us that all of them may be one, Father, just as you are in me and I am in you. May they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. I have given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be one as we are one, I in them and you in me, so that they may be brought to complete unity. Then the world will know that you sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. It's astonishing. Do you see what Paul and Jesus are doing here? In other words, they're saying that our unity is a direct reflection of the unity between God the Father and Jesus the Son. Our unity is a direct reflection of the Trinity itself. Our unity is a reflection of who God is. So don't miss this this morning. Our unity is not optional. Our unity is holy and sacred. So what are we to do with this reality this morning? We're not just a, a social club. We're a part of something more amazing, more profound. We're part of a new humanity united together in Christ. We're part of Christ's body himself. So here's what I want you to take, take with you this morning. First, I want us to recognize that we must be truly united around these core beliefs, this faith that's at, at the middle of who we are. And in order to do this, we must become a people that returns to the scripture again and again in humility and in community to wrestle through and understand what it is we believe. Here's my challenge to you this morning. Know your faith, not just what we tell you, not just your parents' faith. Study for yourself. Ask questions. Wrestle with God. This is a safe place to explore our faith together. And when you see someone struggling to understand their faith, don't cast them aside. Instead, as Paul said, be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Secondly, if you're listening at home this morning and you feel isolated, maybe you don't feel like you're really part of the church. I want you to hear this. You're not alone. You weren't meant to walk this journey by yourself. You were loved, you were valuable, you were needed, and the body of Christ would not be the same without you. 
Third, perhaps for some of you today, you've already tried to experience unity in community, but it hasn't worked out so well. Maybe you've been rejected. Maybe you think, well, I've tried, but I just don't seem to fit in. Maybe you've tried, but others just don't seem to want to get to know you. Look, I get it. Relationships are hard. They take work. And often we fail to be welcoming and loving. Sometimes we're just not very good at it. But here's what I want you to hear today. Don't give up. Our unity is holy and sacred, and God cares deeply about it. And fourth this morning. Perhaps some of you are thinking, sure, unity sounds nice, and we all know that, but what about false teaching? Where do we draw the line in our faith? Do we just accept everyone regardless of what they believe or how they live? Here's what I want us to think about this morning. As Christ's body, we are to have doors open to be welcoming and loving to everyone, regardless of where they come from, regardless of their culture. We're a place that welcomes and loves saints and sinners alike. And yet at the same time, we are a people founded and based in these core beliefs about who God is, who we are. There's a tension here that we all have to wrestle through, and it's not always neat and clean. Sometimes it gets messy. We are to be a people of love, accepting everyone as image bearers of God himself, and yet we hold fast to truth. There is truth and grace, and how we bring those together, that's the work of of being the body of Christ. So this morning as we close, as we're reminded that there is one body, one spirit, one hope, and one calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, and one God, I can think of no better way for us to respond to this than for, for you to just sit back and listen to me say the words of the Apostles' Creed over us. The Apostles' Creed goes back for the better part of 2,000 years. These are the core beliefs as Christians, generation after generation, all across the world, these are what we return to again and again. And we say, when we go to the scriptures, this is what we find to be true. Will you receive these words this morning? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead, and on the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of the saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you pray with me? Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning in our own homes often feeling separated and disconnected from your people. But we have faith and we believe this morning that we are part of you. We are part of the body of your son and we are unified in our faith in you. God, help us make us one this morning. Help us to remember who we are in you and help us bring us together about around these core, core truths that we might open the doors and invite all the lost and broken to come and to see who you are as you reign over this world. We pray in the name of King Jesus. Amen. Our Father everlasting, the all-creating, Christ the Son, Jesus our Savior. I believe in God our Father, I believe in Christ the Son, I believe in the Holy Spirit, our God is three in one. I believe in the resurrection, that we will rise again.
Virgin, our defender, suffered and crucified. Forgiveness is in. Descended into darkness, you rose in glorious light. Forever seated high. So it's beautiful outside today. We're gonna to have a picnic. It's a fun social occasion. There's gonna be hot dogs and hamburgers, kids playing. But my challenge to you this morning would be, don't let it just be a, a one-off social occasion. Be vulnerable, have some real conversations. Be brave, take a step and, and meet somebody. Try to build community, love on people. Look for somebody who needs to belong and reach out to them. And Christ will begin to knit us together in him to go do the work of his body. So this morning, I pray that you being rooted and established in love may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and how long and deep and high is the love of Christ. Have a wonderful week.